continue with equations of motion. Good day, grade 10s. I hope that you are well. All right, so they're giving us a question here, and I'm going to show you at the end of this question uh, how to convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second and to also, um, you know, apply what we call relative velocity in this case. All right, so let's get into the question. They say while traveling at a constant velocity of 108 kilometers per hour, the driver of a car notices a sign warning motorists to keep a safe two-second following distance. At that instant, the car is 80 meters per, uh, I mean, 80 meters behind the truck that is traveling at a constant velocity of 90 kilometers per hour. Right, now, firstly, they say to us, explain the meaning of a safe two-second following distance. Right, so a safe following distance Remember, it's the distance that is required in order to be able to stop without colliding onto the other vehicle. All right. So it is the minimum distance that you must, you know, maintain behind another vehicle in order for you to be able to stop without colliding. Right. Now, in this case, they say to us, calculate that uh, safe two second following distance behind the truck All right now ladies and gents let's do this in order for us to be able to do this we're going to have to make you know some changes to what is happening in the picture so we're going to use the concept of a relative velocity meaning the car or rather the truck is moving at 90 kilometers per hour and the car is traveling at 108 kilometers per hour. So relative to the truck, right? What is the velocity of the car? Now to apply relative velocity, let's assume that the, the truck has stopped. Now in order for us to do that, it means we're going to subtract minus 90 kilometers per hour onto the truck. But what we do on the truck, we have to do on the car. So I'm going to subtract there 90 kilometers per hour. And so what does that give me? It will give me 18 kilometers per hour, right? So that means that that will be the time that, um, or rather that will be the relative velocity that the car has relative to the truck, right? Okay, so now... We, we need to be mindful that our velocity, our speed, is in kilometers per hour. So how do we convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second? Ladies and gents, I want you to please remember this. That whenever I've got kilometers per hour, so this is 18, so this is kilometers divided by hours. That's what it means, right? So to convert from kilometers to meters, what you do is you multiply by a thousand. So two kilometers is actually 2,000 meters. Why? You just simply multiply it by a thousand, right? Kilo stands for a thousand. And now divide it by. Our time must be in seconds. So this is one hour. So how many seconds are there in one hour? You'll agree with me that one hour has got 60 minutes. And 60 minutes, or rather a minute, has got 60 seconds. So it, which means 60 minutes in an hour multiplied by 60, sec uh, 60, um, in, uh, 60 seconds rather in a minute, right? So this is a thousand divided by, so I'm multiplying by a thousand, dividing by 60 times 60, which is 3,600. So let's do that. This is times 1,000, divided by 3,600. And I get a velocity of 5 meters per second. 
please be very careful when you're going to deal with this question. Remember that the time there is given is two seconds, uh, but your speed was given in kilometers per hour. Right, now let's go into it. So meaning that you multiply by a thousand, you divide by 3,600. You know, I most often tell my learners at the center that you can just simply divide by 3.6, right? So I could have taken the 18 and divide by 3.6. All right, and that gives me the value. Now let's answer the question. They said calculate the safe two second following distance behind the truck. So we're looking for the distance. What are we given? Our velocity, right? And note they said the following, dis uh, the following distance, right? And notice that the following distance in this case means that the car must be able to actually stop. Okay, so now our initial velocity would be 5 meters per second. Our final velocity, the car must be able to stop within this time. We don't know what the acceleration is. The time that is taken should be 2 seconds. And in this case, we're looking for the distance, right? So what I'm going to do, use my equations of motion. Notice we don't have the acceleration. So which equation has or does not have uh, acceleration? Delta X. That's 1 over 2. VF plus vi delta t so our delta x value in this case that's what we're looking for the following distance final velocity we said is zero remember that our car is going to stop initial velocity would have been five and the time is two seconds And so, that would give us 5 meters. Okay, right. So, that is the distance between, uh, or rather, rather, that is a safe following distance between the truck and the car, right? So, the car must be actually 5 seconds behind the truck if it is to stop within time. All right, now let's answer the next question. They say to us, calculate how long it will take the motorist to get to a safe two-second following distance behind the truck. All right, now we've just found out that the distance, or rather a safe following distance, is a distance of five meters, right? So meaning that... For the car to be in a safe following distance, it needs to be five meters away from the truck. Okay. So, they're asking us when will the car get to this point? That is where there is a safe following distance. So, meaning, when will the car get to this point? Now, note, if this is, five meters and the car is 80 meters away then it means that in order for it to get to the point where it is at a two second following distance the car must actually get closer to the truck right and what is the distance what is that distance for it to be five meters away from the truck right it's the difference right so that's going to be 80 minus that five and so a safe following distance is at five meters behind the tr the truck so the car must actually move 75 meters to be behind the truck now remember that the car and the truck were moving at constant velocity meaning zero acceleration right 
So that means that we can actually use um, either one of our equations in this case. Uh, I'll show you the equations that we're looking at, right? So uh, we are looking for the distance, how long, right? So in this case, they're saying, okay, uh, rather how long, which means that it, it, it is the time. I said distance, sorry, that is the time, right? That it will take for it to cover that distance of 75 meters. But remember, it covers this distance with a constant speed. And it is a constant relative speed of 5 meters per second relative to the truck. Okay, so that means that my initial velocity and my final velocity are both equal, right? So I can say, well, delta x is actually equal to vi delta t plus half a delta t squared. My initial velocity, remember it's the same as the final velocity, that would be 5. But I want to find out what the time is, right? So my distance that I'm meant to travel is the 75 meters per second, uh, uh, rather 75 meters, the distance, right? But remember, because it is moving at constant speed, what do we know? Acceleration is zero. So that means this term falls away, right? So that means plus that zero. So what happens? We're going to just divide by five on either side. And what do we get there? So we're going to get 75 divided by uh, 5. And that should give us, uh, is it 25? Uh, 15 rather. Uh, so that will give us a distance of, I mean rather a time of 15 seconds. So which means it will take the car 15 seconds to get two, uh, five meters behind the truck. Now you could have used another equation of motion in this case, right? And the other equation of motion is delta x is one over two vf plus vi times delta t. Our final and initial velocity would be the same. So that will be a half of five plus another five, right? And because we're looking for time, our displacement would be 75. So this is how you substitute, ladies and gents. You write down the equation, you substitute, and thereafter you can start doing some gymnastics mathematically, right? So five plus five will give us 10. A half of 10 is five. And you can see how Dividing by 5 on either side will give us exactly the same answer, which is 15 seconds. Right. This is a very interesting question because I think uh, what it involved is for us to calculate the relative velocity first. Right. Uh, but it also uh, required us to convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second. Right, and uh, of course, just play around with what we're given. Ladies and gents, uh, that is how you're going to answer these questions. That is how the cookie crumbles, right? And if you're still struggling with, um, you know, this section or any other section in maths and science, you're welcome to get in touch with us. Uh, our details are on the description of this video, right? You will get even more questions uh, that we can assist you with or even more content so that you do well in your maths and science. Otherwise, ladies and gents, I will see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.